Welcome to another episode of Life and Times with Tub City. As the host, I'm always grateful for the incredible guests we've had on the show who've left a lasting impression on my life. So today I want to talk about the company that's been making a difference in countless lives all across America. Pin Waste. P-I-N stands for Power in Numbers. Pin Waste is revolutionizing the way HOAs manage their waste and recycling services. They've developed the Pin app, which empowers HOAs to negotiate group deals for services like pest control, bulk item removal, trash can cleaning, and most importantly, trash and recycling. Think of Pin Waste as the perfect blend of Groupon and Nextdoor, designed exclusively for HOAs. Their platform allows communities to leverage their size and secure the best deals with vendors. I'm all about bringing value to your life, and that's why we partnered with Pin Waste. Ready to lower your waste bill and make a positive impact? Then just visit www.pinwaste.com and mention that you heard about them from the Life and Times in Tub City podcast. Their services are available nationwide, so everyone can join the Pin Waste movement. Save money, go green, and make a difference with Pin Waste today. So um, we go back. So like I said, I made all those tapes and DVDs, and I got back on my grind. Time out. During this time frame mm-hmm. of you being in the the Phantom of the Opera School, yeah, <laughs> what are your parents saying? Are they parenting or they just don't? They don't know. A, and you're not saying, I need to leave because you're trying to get film? Or what is your yeah, mindset? My, my mindset is I'm trying to get film. By any means necessary? I guess so. That's what I was. Okay, so, okay, so you make the tape. Yep. And this is where things get a little bit history's not been told the right way. Yeah. And I don't know if I need to disclose that. I don't know. I'm talking about Tony's situation. Yeah. You guys come to the apartment. Yeah. You show me the tape. Yeah. I know how you got the FIU. Yeah. But there's a lot of other different type of stories out there. But I put both of y'all in front of them. They didn't bite on you. Yeah. So we'll just leave his story over there. So now they didn't, FIU didn't take you. Yeah. So what, so now what are you doing? Okay, so I'm still... Because I feel like it's summertime, or is it not summertime? No, it's November. When so y'all came to November, the crib? It was like November, December. You came to my house? Yeah. Okay. Because I was at FAU in January. So, um, I was still... I got an offer from Bethune-Cookman, because I was hold on, hold on. sending my tapes. For the listeners out there, this next part, <laughs> I feel like I know what you're going to say, yeah. but... When somebody says, I don't have help, or a coach messed over me, or you're the definition of make it happen yourself. Yeah. Because you're Haitian. Yeah. You don't know nothing about football. Your parents not helping you. Your mama not helping you. Your daddy not helping you. You go to the fakest school in the history of the world. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. You're living on a couch probably. Yeah. With- an air bed. Uh, air two air beds. Okay. <laughs> we in the room with two air beds and, and they keep going flat. <laughs> you make your own letters and highlight to get to the fake school. Yeah. Well, to get to Shaw, yeah. which you end up at the fake school. Yeah. Now, you got to make your own stuff f- from the fake school to get to the next level. Exactly. Okay, so now go ahead and... So then I do the same thing, like you said, Calling and emailing and doing all that. I got an offer from Bethune Cookman. Uh huh. Um, and then I went to, I had a car, so I would drive around. I went to Miami. Me and Tony went to Miami. <laughs> they told us, now nah, we signed enough guys. Um, we went to uh, FIU. It was Coach Brown, right? Was there? Hurley Brown. Hurley Brown. Coach Brown was there. Um, then I went to FAU. Which, Insert some history into that. Coach Reese, who's the coach at, God, where is he at now? It's a school down here. God, Coach Reese is my brother's roommate from college. Okay. He played for my uncle at San Diego State. 
he's a high school coach now. He coaches here. I can't think of the school. It's in Cutler Bay. It's a private I don't know, school. The, I don't know okay. what the school is down south. Well, he told Miami that they should sign Tony, mm -hmm. and they said no. Yeah. He's not good enough. He's too small. But yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, we went in there with the film. We, like, walked in the office. We didn't have no appointment. Uh huh. I don't know how. We just walked straight into the receiver's coach office. Because we used to go down there with you. Yeah. And me and JP used to go down there. We used to go to the practice. Yeah. We used to steal their gloves. The little <laughs> frozen pops they had for uh to help them hydrate. We used to do all that. And then when once they was like on Richard, you know, I used to hang out with Big Rich. Yeah. So the, you knew the the, the build, layout. The building. You, yeah, yeah. You knew how to get into the. Don't walk this way. Walk this yeah. way. Okay. Go in the weight room. Yeah. Yeah. So we walked in, went up to the office, sat in the receiver coach room, and uh, was like, here's our film. Put it on. And he put it on. And he was like, oh, we signed enough receivers this year. But they but they signed some dude from Central. He wasn't that good. I don't remember his name. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, But he wasn't that good. Like, so. So you day, just walked in the yeah, office? Yeah, we walked in everywhere. This was all my idea. I want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> this was it. It's Tony's idea. Yeah. But he was just with me. So you just laying around the house like, yo, I'm going to just. What's no, the worst I had that can a plan. Happen? I was like, that's your gonna, plan. I'm going to go into every school. Uh huh. I'm going to try to find every coach and we're going to send them all this film and we're going to figure it out. Tony had the skills. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But he just ain't have it mentally. You know what I mean? But. So then you get to. How'd you get to FAU? How I got to so FAU. So you got Bethune. Was, Bethune was your only offer. Bethune was my only offer. Um, and there was another school in like Georgia, a D2 school. Uh huh. I can't even remember the name of it. And then Coach Carosa, we went to a D1 camp. Coach uh, Dunn made us go to a D1 camp. Me, Tuan, JP, William, Willie Will. You remember Willie Will, short, light skinned dude. Um, Rivers. Ronald Rivers. Um, who else was there? Um, it was a bunch of us there. And Coach Carosa was the coach there at, at the, the camp. D1 camp. Uh huh. So it was a bunch of D1 coaches coaching. I don't know how they did that. I don't know how that was an illegal. For no, they, they still do it now. To coach high school kids? Yeah, it's just a recruit. They call it a camp, but it's always just a recruiting thing. Okay. But you we'll, get a bunch of kids there, and it's a another chance to recruit and evaluate high school kids. Yeah. That's all. It, okay. So that's what it was. And he coached Carroza was there. And um, B.J. Manley, he was a running back at New Orleans when they won state championship. 2003. Gotcha. My daddy worked with his dad. Okay. And um, so that's how, I, you know, I knew him. And then when I got to FAU, he helped me get to the office. So then I, because I didn't know where it was at. I didn't never been there. So you just remembered his name? BJ, yeah. Oh, BJ. Okay, okay. Yeah. BJ was at FAU. He was at FAU. Okay, and cool. I, and I just walked into the office, walked upstairs, and um, it was like around, it had to be around the time they be doing recruiting. Mm -hmm. So the coaches was there. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Coach Snellenberger, Howard Snellenberger. Yeah. I was like, this dude looked like the KFC man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I gave the video, got my tape. And um, he was like, all right, just go sit in the lobby. And then he watched my tape. And then he came out. Because I remember Coach Carosa. And then I was talking to him. He was like, oh, yeah, I remember you from the camp and stuff. Then I gave him the tape. And then they watched the tape, all the coaches. And then um, there was like, Coach Crow was like, we're going to uh, offer you a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, and I was like, all right, I'm going to tell my, my mom over there. How did you feel? I felt good. I was confused. It was. You didn't. You, it was like, that was too easy. Yeah. So, and they, but he was just like, the only thing you need to do is you have to pass an entry exam but you can't take it here. You got to go to Miami Dade and take it. Got gotcha. you. Which is, okay. Uh -huh. So, um, so I had to go to Miami Dade. Mind you, coach, I'm doing all this by myself. Because mom is not helping you, dad is not helping No, because they don't understand. Okay. So, and I don't have no coach helping me. Yeah. Ain't no coach done. Ain't calling FAU at, telling uh, them, yeah, you should sign know. this kid. And I'm gone. So this is 2000 what? Six. No, this 2000, yeah, six. Yeah. Going into 2007. Okay, so, yeah. So, I have nobody helping me. Ain't no coach. Like, Tony had Coach Brooks helping him. 
He had you helping him. He had coach. Uh, well, technically, the help. But they giving they calling people for on him. You know what I mean? No, but what I'm saying is the DVD that I sent mm-hmm. that I got in touch with FAU and Miami. It was for both. Yeah. Of y'all. So it wasn't like I was like only Tony. No, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like but <clears throat> they had he had more push out there for him because uh-huh. Coach Brooks was trying to help him, and um, Coach Thurman, Coach is that his name? The D line coach. Yeah. Yeah, Thurman. He was at Norfolk State, I think, at that time. Yeah. Because Dwight ended up transferring over there. He did. He yeah. did. He did. And then he, yeah. Okay. So. So then um, I went to the Miami Day, took the took the test. I failed it the first time. I was depressed. Study. I was like, I need a book. What do I? Because I never, I didn't know what to study. <laughs> I'm like, excuse me, could I have a study guide to study? Uh-huh. So I was able to study, and then I passed it the second time. Uh huh. So once I passed it, then they signed me. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a lot to go through to get a scholarship. So when you, you enrolled in January. In January, that's fall, the spring. So you got four years left. Yeah. When did you start playing? I played my freshman year. You played as a true freshman. As a true freshman, yes. I, I think I would have been the starter. I hurt my ankle in spring. I played as a true freshman. <laughs> I, 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 I first the first the first time they beat like a D one program mm-hmm. was against Minnesota, mm-hmm. and I scored I think twice that game. And I had a big catch on third down to make us close the game. I, in a bowl game, I caught the ball fourth and six for us to win the game as a freshman. And then y'all telling me I couldn't play at Northern. <laughs> like, come on, man. Come on. Wow, bro. So you're a sophomore. This is the question I wanted to ask you earlier. Yeah. Now you're in college. Yeah. The... the the demographic has opened up mm-hmm. of the the type of people that you're around. Yeah. Did you face any prejudice, racism, or anything being Haitian in um, that manner in no. the football world or anything like no, that? No, not not in that manner of the football world. We had Haitians on the team, and this in Boca Raton, like West Palm Beach, is a big Haitian community. Okay. Like Delray Beach is a big Haitian community. Um, so I didn't have no issues like that. The only I, the issue I had was in college was I didn't understand it. What you mean? Because I'm like I'm just here to go to the pros. In your mind, <laughs> the school stuff is just yeah. I was kind of depressed. Like I'm like, why I gotta go through all this? I just want to go to the NFL. <laughs> you didn't understand. The I didn't process? understand the process at all. It took me like my junior year. Then I'm like, okay, I'm here to get smarter. <laughs> I'm here to learn something. I'm not here to just play football. So, that's so how was your sophomore year? My sophomore year was all right. I played a lot. Um, but we When had, did it? Okay. You, you wanted to go to the NFL. Yes. When did it realistically click that, damn, I'm good enough? Because a lot of kids... Yeah. Fake like they're good enough and fake like they want it. Yeah. But when did it click like, damn, I think I can do uh, it? I think my sophomore year, going into my junior year, I spoke to my coach, Coach Jackson. He was like the closest coach to you mm-hmm. as far as like teaching me how to play football, mm-hmm. play receiver. And um, I asked him, I'm like, because he coached – um. His last name was Hagens, something like that. He was a receiver for the Dolphins. Yeah. And he was his coach at Arizona State. Mm-hmm. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And he, um, I was like, Coach, do you think I could, I'm good enough to play in the NFL? He was like, yeah, you remind me of that kid. Mm-hmm. you just as good. You just got to work hard. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right. And then I used to always ask the trainer. A trainer name was John Burnside. He used to be a trainer at LSU. And I used yeah. to always be like, am I as good as those guys? He was like, yeah, you could play over there. Okay. That's all you needed. That's all I needed. And I was like, okay, so I've been lied to my whole life. Because I really felt at some point like I am, I'm not. But why, I'm, why is Miami or all these? All this, why they don't want me? Well, I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. But but John, I used to always ask John that. And I used to always uh, ask my coach, receiver coach, about the NFL and 
He'll give me tapes and everything. So you so you go into your your senior year. Mm-hmm. You have a good season. Yeah, I had a good season my senior year. When um and then I went to the scene the East West Shrine game. You played in Shrine game. Yes, and then what really I feel like got me. You went to the combine, huh? And I went to the combine. Yeah. All those was great. All that was like dreams come true. Uh huh. Did you understand at the time what it was, or you still? Nah, yeah, I was like, I was just like happy. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does your parents know what's going on right now? Yeah, by like my junior year, and went by my senior, by my junior year, end of my junior year, by my beginning of my senior year. Now I got agents calling me every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm having meetings with them and all this other What'd stuff. What you sign with? Um, out of college was Brian Levy. Jewish dude. I signed with another dude. Then I fired him because he was trying to make me go to Arizona. To train? No, to for the team, Arizona. How's he trying to make you? What you oh, is it a free agent? Free agent, yeah. Got you. Okay, so you didn't get drafted, though. No, I was undrafted. Okay, agent. so at that time, me and you had reconnected. Mm-hmm. What, what made you choose? Because I've always wanted to ask you this. So remember, my uncle wanted you. Yeah. What made you choose not to go there and to go to Texas? And looking back, do you think you would have did the same thing? Um. What made me go there was my agent. He was just like they got like twelve receivers over there in the Saints. Yeah, but every school, every I, team has. I the know same that's of what he told me, and then he told me Houston. Only person you got to think about is Andre. Andre Johnson, mm-hmm. like, to compete with him. And I'm like, all right, cool. That sounds way better than 10 receivers. Then I had Jacksonville and I had Baltimore. Mm-hmm. But I don't know who's God. God wanted me to go there. Mm-hmm. So what – how did that go? Because you played – it was it three or four years? Three years with Houston. Okay. It went – it was It was like – it was a dream come true. Like I just coach, I just told you all the stuff I went through just to get to college. <laughs> like so, so, did you make the fifty three your first year? Yeah, you made the fifty three your first year. Yeah. Then I got hurt, so then I had to sit out. And then my next year, it was like I was able to play a lot. And then my the next year it was just like I was just part of the system. But then we had a bad year, uh-huh. so our coach got fired. And then you had. Then I went to Minnesota, and then I got hurt. If I didn't get hurt in Minnesota, I think I would have had, like, a good year there, too. Because mm-hmm. that's when um, they signed Teddy Bridgewater. So, uh, and then Adrian Peterson got hurt, so they had to throw the ball. They had to throw the ball. Yeah. So, you got traded or you got released from Houston? No, my contract was up. Oh, okay. So, it was, uh, um, I guess my agent was just like, you could um, sign back with them, or you could just go, try to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So I just went to Minnesota. I worked out for Carolina and the Dolphins in Minnesota, and then I just went to Minnesota. During that time period, would you have changed anything? If you would have did anything different, do you think you would have lasted longer, or it just was – that's just the way it went? I think that's just the way it went. It's just injuries you can't. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh-huh. There's literally nothing you can do about injuries. Did um, <laughs> was it everything you thought it would be, or was it like when you got there, you was like, I don't really like this part. Yeah, of it. when I got there, like you put so much into it, like especially being not being like a top person where it's just easy for you to just. Go, you know what I mean? Where you go, okay, I'm a top prospect in high school. I go to Alabama. I get drafted in the first round. Then I go to the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not really much, you know, they go through stuff, but not like on the field where you got to like put in all this work and do all this other stuff. And then when you get there, you're like, I did all this for this. That's how you felt? Yeah. Because of the, because you thought people were supposed to be better? or I thought people were supposed to be like super human out there. I thought like I was about to be seeing some dudes just like incredibly fast and <laughs> strong and, and you like they just like me. 
Yes, I'm like, <laughs> and why I can't get drafted? I'm just as good as these dudes. Yeah. Like, so. Okay, was there anybody that you was like, he's different? Oh, yeah, of course. Andre Johnson, like. For real? Yes, you like, this guy is he's superhuman. Like, Drive. <laughs> 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 Dre out there going to play 70, 60, how many plays on offense? He's going to play all of the plays, and they're going to target him 15 times. And the other team know they're going to throw him the ball 15 times, and he still end up with, like, 12 catches. There's nothing that they can do about it. And this is for, like, he when I got there, he probably was, like, at his ten, on his 10th year. Really? Yeah. He had to be, like, on his 10th or an eighth or ninth year. But still. But still, that's what I'm saying. So he's been doing this for nine years. When you think about the Texans, that's the only player you think about. Andre Johnson. <laughs> At that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was like crazy. And then uh JJ Watt, he was a freak too. We had good players. We was good. We was twelve and four. Twelve and four and then I think eleven and five. Why they fired we was that last year we was like two and fourteen. Got it. Oh, okay. And then he already had the previous residue of not being as good, but he had those two years where he won we won the yeah. championship. Uh huh. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know if you. I don't want you to name names, but was it guys, mm-hmm. your team or other team, that had big names that you used to think like, like look up to? Yeah. And then you like, yo, he's yeah, trash. Of course, for of real. Course. <laughs> you just like, wow. And he, this is just crazy. But it's be some guys that, and you'd be like, okay, I see why he get paid that much. For real, like Andre Johnson, like. 15 car you could play receiver or coach you got you know they double coverage in him the defense is like we're gonna take this guy away <laughs> we're gonna stop him it doesn't matter it's still still it's just a, like Arian Foster was like amazing too for real what yes he was really good he was amazing he was who was your quarterback Matt Schaub he was good too I don't know what they you know the people in Houston used to talk about but he's he was really good and the thing about Matt Schaub, we was injured like at the same time, so we was rehabbing at the same time. Yeah. So during the um off season, I was in Houston and I used to go throw with him like every day. Uh-huh. I was his route person, which was good because in when in the game he used to throw me the ball sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Except because you know where the ball going. We all know where the ball is going. <laughs> it ain't no secret. We know where the ball is going. So Okay. Defensively. Let's say cornerback wise. Yeah. Who was a guy that was like, fuck, like he was hard to deal with? Um, for us, for me, it was like Jonathan Joseph. Uh huh. He played fifteen years, and he 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 was good. For real. Yeah, I used to ask him questions all the time. Like we'll come out and three by one, he'll see a flat, and he like, I need, I know you either running a curl or a comeback, and I'm either running a curl or a comeback. You come in three by one, the guy, the most inner guy running a flat route, then he know the guy, the, 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 this guy right here is, is going to either run a comeback or a curl. And, and the middle cool. guy is going on the through route every time, yeah. <laughs> then he said he'll look at the, um, you talk corner back, yeah. he said he'll look at the offensive tackle set, mm-hmm. and then he know what's coming. Like, you ain't in college, you ain't facing nobody like that. In this I don't understand coaches and the spacing. Yeah. If you're if you're three by one mm-hmm. and you on a if you're on a left hash and you go three by one to the field, mm-hmm. number one is not getting the ball. Never. Ever. This is a waste of time. Why are we even guarding him? <laughs> like I would look, shift the to make it look good off him. Shift every and then it's like the the people that line up, you know, got the numbers, mm-hmm. and then the middle of the numbers, mm-hmm. you ain't going out. <laughs> you gotta, you, you gotta, gotta go come in. in. Yeah. Oh, we trying to stretch the field, move the safeties. Like what? Yeah. It's not. It's, you're not. I don't know. That's me. Yeah. That was. So. You get done with football, mm-hmm. and now you're, you. What does your after life football look like? Um, 
changed. I think the same for every other person. You go through like a phase of like where you just depressed. You was depressed? Yeah. Just because you're grieving. Like you're trying to figure life out. Uh-huh. You know, like you like, what am I going to do now? What do I like to do? Yeah. You don't even know what you like to do. Because you've been concentrating on that. <laughs> yeah. For everything. It's for everything. Uh-huh. Like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I just tried a whole bunch of different things till I found some stuff that I like to do. But for the people, life is good. You're good. You're not crazy and broke. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, for when, when I played, for the most part, I just saved my money. Mm-hmm. Like, you get paid. Like, it, it sounds crazy, like, now saying it, but, like, you just get used to it. Right and I and I I didn't even make that much money like just getting paid that much money Mm -hmm. you gotta get used to it after like one like after your first year it's like okay then you just keep getting paid (laughs) so it's like okay you know what I mean uh huh then you just want to get that big payday like everybody else but you didn't get I didn't get I didn't get to that point but you're still good yeah I'm still good uh huh so did you buy anything crazy a car. Like a dumb car or like a regular? Everybody needs a car. Like but a did regular you, car. That's what I'm saying. Did you? I'm saying, did you splurge on anything? Like now, you look back like, damn, I shouldn't have did that. Is what I'm saying. Um, I wanted a car. I bought a car, but it wasn't. You didn't buy a Rolls Royce. No, is what I'm saying. no, that's what I didn't. I'm saying. Nah, I don't. I don't. Nothing I could think of that I was like bought that was dumb. Uh huh. Nah. I think maybe I feel like my first business I bought. I didn't. It didn't. It wasn't as, as successful as I wanted it to be. What was that? It was like a a lawn care business. I, yeah, I think you remember me talking. Yeah. Why? Why do you think it didn't work? Um. It was like the whole customer service part of it. Yeah. Because you got you're dependent on people to pay you, right? Mm-hmm. Then you then the guy I bought it from was like an older Spanish dude and he had it like where he had everything written down and it's 2000 and what 17 or whatever uh, you're supposed to be able to do so everything that was online a bad, that was a bad investment yeah so I had, I tried to shift everything online to make them automatic payments and all this type of stuff yeah. and some of them wasn't trying to shift over there and all that stuff so did you just take but I loss? got my money back though oh okay, okay, okay I sold it and just got my money back okay okay so, so what do you what are you into now? Are you coaching or nah? Um, that's what I want to ask. You did coach for a little while. I did coach, but so, I didn't like coaching. Okay, mm-hmm. why? Because because now you see the other side. Yes, I see the other side of it, and it's like it's a lot of politics into it. Um, some coaches don't know what the heck they be talking about. Because <laughs> <laughs> you was trying to get into college for a minute, yeah, like a while, I and I was trying college. to tell you, like, yo, this ain't yeah really what you think. Yeah, you did tell me that. You did tell me that. You know what I'm saying? How does it feel dealing with the kids? In college? No, no, no. Like, as a coach. Yeah. Because I used to tell y'all a lot of stuff, and y'all used to be like, oh, he crazy. Yeah. Whatever. But you been D1 pros. How does it – how did it – Feel dealing with kids that's trying to tell you that you don't know what you're talking about or um, don't want to listen to you. It's like kids are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> like kids are so dumb. Like kids are so dumb, coach. I didn't know how dumb I was until now when I look at a kid. I'm like, I was dumb. I know I don't know anything and I think I know something. That's crazy. They trying to tell you how everything goes. I'm like, how are you trying to tell me how it goes? I'm confused. <laughs> you haven't been through it yet, so you don't know how it goes. Like, what would you tell a young person that wants to pursue, let's say, athletics? What would be your advice? It's the same advice that everybody else gives you. You just got to work hard. And, <laughs> but you just got to have some talent, man. Uh-huh. You got to be good. That's the thing. A lot of these dudes don't have talent. They think they're more talented than what they are. Of course. And then they don't want to work. Of course. Yeah, you got to you gotta have some talent. It's got to be something God gave you. Because you can work hard, coach. You can work hard, mm-hmm. extremely hard. 
to and be as good as you're going to be. And that's not good enough. That's not good enough. <laughs> that's just that. That's the reality of it. Yeah. That's the reality of it. Just got to just know that you got the talent. Work very hard. Harder than everybody else, which sounds good. But people don't want to do that. It's different. It's, yeah. it's an inconvenience to do that. Yeah. What do you have to sacrifice some stuff? Do you give that? Do you? Do your brothers, your younger brothers? They don't listen to me, coach. <laughs> if they listen to me, I would not be asking you like, hey, coach, can you help me out? <laughs> you'll be like, hey, is this your brother? That's what you'll be asking me like, hey, that's your brother? I wouldn't be like, hey, coach, can you please like, try to help me out? Please. <laughs> I told them, since they was little kids, I told them, run track. Mm -hmm. They never ran track. I'm like, do you understand that? No matter what sport you play, you got to run. You got to run. So you might as well be good at it. <laughs> it's the fast, simple. It's simple, right? And the faster you are than the other people, it's better for you. It's an advantage. <laughs> I don't know how else to break that down. It's easy. That's simple. Like That's simple math, coach. That's one plus one <laughs> equals two. How in your mind somebody tell you to do something like run track? You don't. You think like you're going to go around it. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need I'm that. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fast enough. All right. So you run into somebody faster. And, and they go different. to college and you don't. Oh, man. That's funny. It's a lot of dudes. Okay. If you go back to New Orleans. Yeah. What separated you? Because at that time. Yeah. There were more talented people. No, I agree with you on that. Then than you. Yes, I agree with you. So what separated you? I think for me, coach, I think it's my faith like that I had in God. Mm -hmm. And I believe like me being Haitian because I had I didn't have those distractions. Okay. I had like I had like limited distractions as far as like my parents and the pressure of like wanting to be the the whatever in sports because I didn't have anybody asking me about football when I go home. So some of those guys like they go on D one, they like their parents know about football. Mm -hmm. They cousins know about football. Yeah. They uncle know about football. They betting they betting on them. They putting it all on oh this is you, you know, you gotta make it for us and our family and all this other type of stuff. Yeah. All that's a distraction. Gotcha. So mine was later, and I was already, I already had my mind focused on what I was trying to do. My mom didn't know about football till my junior year in college, so it's like I'm already, I already have my path that I'm trying to go to. So uh -huh. it doesn't nothing is nothing is gonna get in my way of that. When when you did make it, mm -hmm. where did you have money? Not money problems. Did you have relationship strains because you had money? Um, not really. I just I I just gave everybody money. It's like people call me, ask me for money, so I just give it to them. You didn't go broke or frustrated or nah. I get frustrated. They people still call me today, like to 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 this day, like to today. <laughs> still, I'm like, bro, that was like. This is 2023. That was like so long ago. <laughs> but I still try to help them out as much as I can. Uh -huh. And that's, that's you know, just try to give. That's it. But, yeah, money is crazy. Money is the root to all evil. It's in the Bible. For a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, man, that's, you really do have a story story. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but thank God for it. Uh huh. Thank God for everything. Did you ever get tired of, of the politicalness of the NFL? Yes, yeah, politics. If a guy gets drafted in the first round, he's going to play. Don't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, coach, you can go out there <laughs> and catch the ball with this pinky, with this finger right here, like yeah. this. <laughs> On any route, and the other dude, he could drop five passes. He's going to play. I gave him $5 million. We got to get that out of him. We have to. We have to get that out of him. 
that's it's just politics. That's the politics of it. It's mm-hmm. money. It's a business. It's more of a it's more of a business than it is a game. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I feel like players, you take it personal because it's like your life. But you just a you're, you're just, a player in the business. You're a basically you're you're just an employee. You're just a sales rep. You're just selling their business. You're selling their business. That's it. So, but, but if you take it personal, that's on you. That's on you. That's your business. <laughs> <laughs> but the NFL in the whole is a business. Yeah. And you, and the players are just sales reps and everything the, the the games on TV, the Super Bowls, the combines, that's all marketing for that business. Before we go, can we I don't know, I'm going to ask you kind of. Mm-hmm. You have a famous kind of cousin. Yeah. Is that weird? Yeah, nah, it's it's normal. He been like that since. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Eighteen, but I knew, but I didn't know. Okay, I'm driving in Brickle. Yeah, can we say his name? Stand the man. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just... If anybody doesn't know who Stan the Man is, I asked him to come on a podcast. He laughed at me. Nah, he ain't doing that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't. It's nah. just him. Nah, he ain't doing that, Coach. You think if I go to the office? No, he's not doing that. Okay. All right. Anybody who watches the Miami Heat game, and, and just, I need y'all to close your eyes and picture. If you watch the Miami Heat play, there's the bench. Mm-hmm. There's the head coach. There's one seat. Is it one? It's either one seat or... No, it's the first seat in that row. Because it's like a row of seats. It's the first seat next to the head coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's Stan the Man. If anybody ever looks at the Heat game, yeah. there's a Put black Haitian dude. He's going to have a hat. He usually wears a hat. Yeah. He's sitting next to the coach. That's your cousin. hmm Okay, so... That's my brother. Huh? He's my cousin, but he's really my brother. Like, my dad adopted him. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, he really liked my brother. But he's my cousin. Oh, good. So, I'm driving in Brickell. Mm-hmm. And I look to the left. And he's eating. And I'm like, yo, what up? He's like, hey, come holler at me. Yeah. So, I go park. And I walk up. He's like, hey, give me. 20 minutes, whatever, I'm talking to some people. Yeah. He's talking to Kevin Lyles. Yeah. I don't, do you know who that is? Yeah, he like a music guy. Yeah. And it's another lady who's famous. I don't know her name, but I know her face. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I'm just talking to my people. And it's like, he's like, just give me like 20 minutes. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go grass and eat. And then we'll meet up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think I go eat. About 45 minutes past, I'm like, yo, man, I'm about to leave. He's like, nah, just come to the office. So we go up to the, <laughs> he brings up to the office. Yeah. Like I told you, I knew, but I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So it's a, ho- is it a hotel or a condo? I think that's a condo. I think that's a condo place. Okay, but it looks like. A hotel. Yeah, like, it looks like Will Smith should live in the office. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like on the 98th floor yeah. or some stuff. So I'm like, I knew he was in the business, but I didn't know he was in the business. And then I look at him, like looking at the plaque, like 500,000 million, 2 million. Yeah. I'm like, damn, this dude is like really famous, famous. But um, I remember when he started with Cleet. You don't know who Cleet is. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> yeah, Cleet. I would call Stan talking about Cleet. <laughs> but Stan helped Tony out too. Tony, I don't know what happened to that guy, man. Cause if you ever talk to Tony, tell him he I gotta holler at him. I need to talk to him for like ten minutes. Maybe I, I, that'll help his life get back in track on track. Cause Stan helped him out a lot, man. Stan helped me out a lot too. Stan is the reason why none of that stuff don't impress me. Like when I got to the NFL. Oh were? Cause I was like Stan, I already been around Stan. Stan, I like. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. but you told me like, yeah, my cousin does it, and I knew, but I never 
And this was since high school. Since like he has been doing this since he was eighteen. Stan got to be like forty something. Okay, let's. So to end that story, right? He's like, oh. He said, "Let's go get something to eat." Because I had been in the office with him a couple hours. Yeah. And he has all these people working for him. Yeah. But it. This is what. <laughs> Some people may get this, but I think you'll get this. Yeah. You know what Stan looks like. Yeah. You know he's a, he's like us. Yeah. It's not like he's Braxton off of, <laughs> Yeah. you know, it's not yeah. Will Smith Carlton. Yeah. It's Stan, right? But he has like a white dude, a white girl, a Haitian dude, a black dude, a Mexican, like he has yeah. all these people working for him with all these different, different graphics and like he's the boss. I'm like, dang, this is. Crazy, mm -hmm. and then to end the story, he's like, "Yo, let's go get something to eat." So he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go to my car, meet me." And he called me, he's like, "Yo, we can't eat, dog." And he sound like, like he let me down, yeah, because he just invited me to eat, and he's like, "Yeah, I gotta go meet with Kanye." And I'm like, "Yeah, why are you worried about talking to me?" You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's that's funny. That, <laughs> Yeah. That y'all are, and now I can see when you say that, why don't nothing impress you? Yeah. Because nothing impresses Stan. Yeah. And if y'all like that, then I get how it could rub off on you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because he already showed me all that and just showed me that it's nothing but hype. It's like, yeah. It's, it's just. It's like that school I went to. <laughs> it's like was Barbara Streisand yeah, school of the butt. It was that. It's that real. It's just it's a whole bunch of stuff. Come on, we gotta get Stan to do the interview, man. Nah, Stan ain't doing that. Stan like to stay low key, man. Stan just be chilling. Yeah, you right about that. But man, I appreciate you coming by, man. Yeah, no problem, no problem, Coach. I appreciate you having me, and I appreciate. Everything you did for me and continue to do for me, like trying to help my brothers out. <laughs> and though, you know, we gonna find him a school, man. We'll, we'll, hopefully. hopefully, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, man. But I, I really appreciate you coming down and mm -hmm. taking your time, man. You drove down here from Tampa, Tampa, yeah, to do it. So I mean, that really means a lot. Um, and to close out. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, I knew you had talent. Yeah. Because, and I feel like I can say this now. He used to try to get me to play certain people. Yeah. But I gave you extra chances because you reminded me of me. Okay. Okay. But I knew you wasn't. Where you needed to be, yeah. But I still had a soft spot for you because you reminded me of myself, and I knew it was in there. But I didn't have no clout. I didn't have no pull. Yeah. And I really didn't. I knew how to tell you how to run routes. Yeah. But I didn't understand coaching. Yeah. I didn't understand the politics, the business behind of. Dealing with a person and I didn't understand that part of how to to get what I wanted done and to convey it into you guys and, and to, to get it across. So I was just young and didn't know anything about any I was fresh out of college. I know you just you know, I got the job off of a whim. Yeah. You know, I wasn't even I was trying to go still play ball myself. So but no, nah, I you you definitely had talent, and I knew it. I just didn't know. I knew what I needed you to be, but I was trying to get you to that. But then with my situation, I had to I couldn't get in the building the way I wanted. Yeah. And so so nah. So when when it came back around that you were like successful and doing the thing at FAU, I was like, I was happy and proud. Mm -hmm. From afar, and it was like it's a dope situation. Yeah, that was. And 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 when you <clears throat> think back, Tony has his ways. Yeah. 
And it was like the people that thought the people that the people that thought the other people were gonna make it yeah. wasn't the people who made it. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Because the people who made it, to me, you, Rich, Tony. Yeah. And they wasn't nobody was counting on them to make it. Yeah, y'all I can see that. You, yeah, because rich is rich. Rich is rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got a good heart, but yeah, he's still rich. Yeah. And Tony, everybody knows who Tony is. Yeah. And and the funny thing is, like I tell this to people all the time. They know A B. Yeah. I know Tony. Yeah. I don't and know. You say Tony like when you're talking, you say Tony. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... I don't know when Tony became AB. But that's who I know. Yeah. You know, so when all this stuff is happening and everybody like, oh, you know him? You coach him? Like, yeah, but I know Tony. Like, I when I talk, I talk to Tony. Like, yeah. And that sounds like weird or whatever, but yeah. like, I know his heart and I know... It's just different. Yeah. When you get him, when we around him, it's, it's different, so... Yeah, I can but see that. He not, he not here. He just being him though. That's not he didn't he he. This is he didn't change, bro. Okay, <laughs> you just, just said that. Tony. Okay, so you just said he didn't change, right? Yeah. I've had at least I'm gonna say in the last month, three people ask me. Yeah, I think it's five, but I'm gonna say three. Yo, what's up? And I'm like, look, let me give you an example. Imagine. One of your friends that you went to high school with who was just a live wire. Yeah. Getting 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars. How would they act? And they all look at me and be like, I get your point. Like he hasn't changed. Like that's him. That's him. So people think, oh, he this and CTE, like, no. That's just him. That's him. That's just who he is. <laughs> that's who he he always been like that. And he gonna do what he gonna do and he gonna smile. Yeah. <laughs> so Nah, man. Appreciate your time. Appreciate. Hopefully, if you like it, we'll do it again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, trying to track Big Rich down too. Yeah, you need to find Big Rich. Big Rich would be a good one to get on. Yeah. But all y'all got some super duper stories. Yeah. You need to get your uncle on here too. We're supposed to go down to New Orleans to just. Do his at the at the crib. Yeah, that'd be nice. He still got that same house we went to? On the golf course? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. He coached a lot of good players. Yeah. That'd be good to ask him, like, how do you get how do you get like that much out of all those players? Um okay, you say I'm Yeah. I was I alive. Can imagine. He's nine <laughs> he eighteen times me. <sighs> but that's how I grew up. Yeah. But we need that. They, you can't coach like that no more. That's why I'm glad I'm not coaching. Yeah, because yeah. I was I used to talk crazy. Like. Yeah, yeah, I used to. Coach Brooks had slowed it down too. Upton slowed it down too. Upton did. Coach Upton slowed it down. I used to see Upton when I was in Houston. Upton used to go at your neck. What? And you, <laughs> Coach Upton is jumping on your back. Coach <laughs> Upton used to run with us five o'clock in the morning, and I know he just left the club like. <laughs> I know Upton just left the club two minutes ago. I came out here and ran with us. But he like that guy. Upton's a great person. Bro, y'all practice field was nothing but dust. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. I'ma say that's the I'ma say starting in Norland and then going to a school called Ellsworth Community College and yeah. I had to coach DBs was the best thing that happened to me because it taught me how to deal with stuff, you know. But, yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Lester Jean, former NFL player, entrepreneur. And I could say I, you know, coached you. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right.